The eastern flank of Lancashire is populated by wild and lofty fells, created, or so local legend has it, in the ancient times by pagan gods, so that us decent Lancashire folk didn't have to look at Yorkshire. Amongst those fells squats the mill town, or more accurately mill village, of Dolphinholm, founded by the ex-slave trader Thomas Hines in 1795. Dolphinholm was one of the first villages in Britain to have gas lamps, despite not being connected to the mains at the time. And to the best of our knowledge, it still isn't. There's an argument to be made that Thomas Hind, or Hind, depending on your personal preference, exchanged his international slave trade for a form of homegrown slavery. Many of the cottages built for the workers housed up to seven families at any given time. A packing technique he'd no doubt learned from his misadventures on the high seas. Dolphin Home was busier back then, of course. The mill employed over 1,400 workers and sported the second largest water wheel in Britain in its day. 68 feet in diameter by 12 feet thick. Bested only by the Great Wheel of Laxey on the Isle of Man. The worsted mill closed its gates in 1867. Perhaps for the best, all matters considered. Nowadays, they make goat cheese at Dolphin Home, and the workers' cottages, all 150 of them, are privately owned. For the more factually minded, because there's always some who take this sort of stuff far too seriously, Dolphin Home is a village of two halves, one being the upper, the other, predictably perhaps, being the lower. It boasts, although perhaps boasts is too strong a word for it, a school, Dolphin Home Church of England Primary, a village hall, an Anglican church also known as St Mark's, a Methodist chapel, a pub called the Fleece Inn, and you'd better count your change before you leave the premises with a name like that, one tennis court, one bowling green, and a garage. St. Mark's was built in the 19th century to a design by Lancastrian architects Austin and Paley. It has a weather vane in the shape of a dolphin on its tower, which isn't as appropriate as it sounds. According to the etymologists, the village actually takes its name from a nearby farm of Scandinavian origin. Apparently it means the homestead by the river belonging to some bloke called Dolphinus. Dolphin Home is connected to Abbeystead by the Wire Way, a favourite rambles route, so called because it's a way and it's in the district of the Wire. The residents around these parts seem to have an unhealthy preoccupation with sheep. We've already mentioned the Fleece Inn, but about a mile or so outside Abbeystead you'll also find the Good Shepherd's Church. It's been around since the 14th century. The Victorians gave it their usual customary makeover, adding several stained glass windows, each depicting a passage from the Bible with a distinctly ovine theme. We're not going to make the obvious jokes about farmers wearing nothing but their wellies in moonlit fields. We're much too grown up for that. The Lichgate continues the trend with the words I am the door of the sheep written across its roof joist. Whether this is a commentary on religious followers in general, or an invitation for farmers with specialist requirements, is difficult to say. There is, however, good reason why sheep feature so prominently in this landscape. It's too steep to farm anything else. A few half-hearted medieval terraces are just about visible near Abbeystead if you were uh, nowhere to look. And, at one time, a few centuries ago, our own particular breed of Lancastrian cattle was visible on the slopes. But, in most parts, the fells are almost vertical. Oddly enough, Abbeystead doesn't actually have an abbey. There's some dispute as to whether it ever did. Some historians believe that the village was named after Wiresdale Abbey, founded by Cistercian monks in the 12th century. They place the missing ruins somewhere near the junction of Tarnbrook Wire and Marshall Wire. Other historians believe that Wiresdale Abbey was located somewhere just behind St Michael's and that people chose the name of Abbeystead just because it sounded impressive. Wherever the Abbey was, it isn't there now, and hasn't been for some considerable time. Unfortunately for all its rustic beauty, Abbeystead will always be synonymous with one tragic event, the Abbeystead Disaster. 
Back in 1984, a massive gas explosion demolished the valve house at the pumping station. Eight people died instantly. Another eight died later in hospital from their injuries. And no, we're not going to make any jokes about that. Nowadays, Abbeystead is so somnolent, it's difficult to believe there was ever an explosion here at all. The old school resembles a drawing by Peter Furman. It's difficult to imagine a more idyllic building in which to spend your childhood than Cawthorns and Dowg. They've been educating children here since 1664, although the current Grade 2 listed building went up in the 19th century. The unbelievably wealthy Duke of Westminster owns most of Abbeystead. That's why it all looks so sumptuous round here. You know you're onto a good thing when various members of the royal family take their well-earned breaks from their royal duties every year and travel up to Abbeystead to murder pheasants. Could be worse. They could be shooting peasants, I suppose. Whatever the case. I can think of better hobbies. That's about it for this mini-sode of Lancashire footnotes. There's probably more to say about Dolphin Home and Abbeystead, but we'd have to dig deep for that, because most of the history around these parts appears to have been misplaced. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook. There should be a link supplied in the comments boxes below if we remember. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. That way, you'll never miss an episode again. Or at least, you'll be alerted when a new one's posted so that you can avoid it.